Thank you for joining us to our eChurch family, MFM family, and our friends around the world. We love you. God bless you. Now you know this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And I know, Pastor, they are already glad because they are tuning into this service. God bless you. Bless you. My lesson this morning is in 2 Kings, the 13th chapter. I'm going to read down from verse 14 to 17. And I want you to rock with me and stay in this lesson because it's, I think it's a good one. It's going to inspire, encourage, and motivate us and uh, challenge us to do something that some of us have stopped doing. And in 2 Kings, I'm going to read it out of the New King James Version, uh, the 13th chapter, and we pick up at verse 14. And you probably see it in different translations. But he says, Elijah had become sick with the illness of which he would die. Then Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. And Elijah said unto him, Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. And so he put his hand on it. And Elijah put his hands on the king's hands. Somebody said, Lord, put your hands on my hands. And he said, open the window eastward. And he opened it. And Elijah said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. And he, for you must strike the Syrians at Apac until you have destroyed them. Then he says, take the arrows. So he took them and he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five, six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. And all the people said, amen. The subject this morning, talk back to me, says, take the next shot. shot. That's the subject. Take the next shot. Eat church. Take the next shot. The subject is one about faith. It's about obedience, as you see in the radiant of the context. Taking bows and arrow and opening a window, window to open to me is like the obstacles of anything that might be blocking you. Looks towards the east, indicating that God was still delivering, or he was in the presence of delivering Israel. This is the enacted, unenacted, enacted prophecy, yet participating by faith. It hadn't happened yet. So he put it in motion. He practiced what was about to take place. It was a prophetic movement that the prophet told him to step into. This year will be one of accuracy, aiming at your target and hitting it. But you have to open that window, get the obstacles out the way. A bow and arrow represents the power as a weapon of God. And the arrows are the Lord's deliverance. It is clear in the context that Elijah, Elijah, the, the mentor, Elisha, the understudy here, was sick. Sickness was one that he had realized that it was going to take him out. This great prophet, Elisha, who had done so many miracles, I was reading back through context, picking him up in 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, in the 19th verse, it was when he runs into Elijah. Elisha is plowing with 12 yokes of oxen. Must have been a very strong young man. Plowing the fields, and Elijah comes along and throws the mantle on top of him, and therefore was transferring or calling him. He turned around, Elisha, and tore up the ox, tore up the, the, the plow, sacrifices, and made a sacrifice with the oxen that he had so he could have a feast, but he was getting ready to leave that stuff behind. He burnt everything up. Not many will burn everything up when God calls you to do something for him. But Elisha had something in his spirit that he let it all go. And went after Elijah, following him in first, second Kings, the second chapter. He's following behind him, and there the prophets come and tell him, you know your master is about to be taken to heaven. 
I know this, but I'll follow him wherever he goes. During that time, up until the second chapter of Kings and the second, second Kings, the second chapter, Elisha was just a servant, a minister, going and pouring water on Elijah's hand, just serving as a cupbearer, you might say. But he knew if I stuck close in 2 Kings, the second chapter, when Elijah, Elijah went up, he would get the mantle of power that was on him. I thank God for a man named G. Grady Benton who laid his hands on me before he left here and let me receive some of his mantle. That mantle is the thing that keeps you strong and you wrap yourself into the faith of that word. God always takes something great and wraps it in a, in a pedigree of something that's weak. But that mantle gave him power. Elijah dies. Elisha picks up the mantle, takes up the mantle and goes down to the Jordan River, strikes the water and goes back across operating in the same power. The prophet says, ah, the spirit of Elijah has fallen on Elisha. Moving in that power, he goes and takes salt and pours it into barren water, and the water becomes healed. Moving through miracle after miracle, goes and tells Naaman, your leprosy is about to dry up. Truly, he was a prophet. Tells the woman that needed to have increase in her life and gave her wisdom to know how to increase her life. Spoke to her barren condition. He moves on in the seven chapters. It ain't going to rain, but by my word, that's a bad prophet. It will not happen. But tomorrow about this time, it's going to rain. A prophet speaks things and they come into fruition. He goes off the scene after the anoint Jehu was being the leader and the king. You have no more, hear no more about him. Historians believe that now Elisha is about 85, 90 years young. He is now back on the scene here. Uh, Joash finds that he's sick and he wants to go and visit him. He comes down to visit him. He weeps over him. My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen. It was this statement that was in 2 Kings, the second chapter, where Elisha was caught up by the chariot on the second man to be taken without a funeral. The first was Enoch. Now we see Elijah being taken by the chariot. But now we see also the king is looking at Elisha. I got you mixed up between the J's and the Jah. Jah and the Shah. Just say Jah and Shah. I'm talking about Shah. So it is Elisha who's now getting, falling sick. And the king is saying, my lord, are the horsemen coming to get you? It is here the fight for his life was on. All the great miracles he had done, but now he himself is at the point of sickness. Eli, the king Joash, thinking that because Elisha, Elijah Shah is going to be taken away, feels that the Israel will be in a bad position because he believed that this prophet was the one that was keeping things together for God's people. The prophet Elisha, as a result of his death, was moving in the prophetic. Powerful as he was, death was hovering, but he stopped death to encourage this king. He stayed the hand of death to encourage this king. King Josh here now becomes practice to participate in the practice of the unacted prophecy, unenacted prophecy, the symbol of true victory over Syria that could take place, that would take place. It's in the 18th verse of this Second Kings, the 13th chapter, the king was told to take an arrow that were in his hands and strike the ground these times with the arrows. And he struck three times and he stopped. The man of God was wroth with him and angry because he should have kept striking the ground to show the deliverance over Syria. This prophetic act to symbolize, symbolize the victory over your enemy, Amram. Amram, the Syrian, are the exalted one. Anytime you get a chance to hit your enemy, don't stop till he stop moving. And he told him, I'm angry with you because you didn't keep hitting the ground. This thing that is elevated against you, exalted, the thing that's standing up above you. He said, God has given you a prophetic announcement. You're going to strike it down this year. You're going to move in the element of faith before you have to get to the fight. And you're going to strike it with, with, a, with a devastating blow to destroy it completely. This man, the king, Joash, operated in the lack of faith. 
the unwillingness to be enthusiastic about something that he had been told to do because it looked foolish for him to do it. We see very clearly in that same Second Kings, the 13th chapter, around verse 25, that he only defeated his enemy three times because of his lack of enthusiasm and lack of faith. This half-heartedness that he had, little enthusiasm and no energy to what God, the prophet, had told him to do. We see in, Col in Colossians, the third chapter, in verse 23, the Bible says, whatsoever you do, do it heartily. As unto as to the Lord and not to man. Hartley here points out that it comes from the heart. It is the act and emotions that one where it proceeds from. Put your heart into it. You don't need to praise God with your little pity pat clap and your bit of hallelujah. No, put your heart into it. Open up all of you and pour yourself out to this thing because God's been too good to you for you to be that cute to say thank you Jesus. Open your mouth and give God what's due him because everything that has breath ought to give God praise. Some of y'all still holding out acting cute but you know God's been good to you and you should do this heartily from your heart unto the Lord. Wave at somebody said, put your heart into it. Don't come to church and be all stiff and all sold up. Put your heart into it. If I'm going to do something big this year, if I'm going to win big this year, then I'm going to have to put my heart into it. Take the arrows that are in your hands. Somebody says, in my hands. The victory that you're looking for is in your hands. So this is the act of faith on display. It is victory through faith before the battle even gets started. David said it like this in Psalms 144 and 1. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, my strength. In other words, King James. He says that who trains my hands to, for war and my fingers to battle. God gives you strategies. He gives you the ability to fight things. Some of you got victory and don't know how you got it. But God gave you the ability to fight through that depression and fight through those things that was trying to destroy your mind. Fight through that spirit that was telling you you'll never be nothing. You fought through that thing and your hands become a warring instrument. To fight here is the battle song of David. It is the one that is relentless, the saying that I will not give up until I have come to the place of victory. God here is saying to us, as it also in Psalms 18, that he does not promise to eliminate the challenges. Instead, he promised to give us the strength to meet these challenges. If you are going, if we don't ever have rough places and rough roads and mountains to climb and battles to fight, we would not grow. But it's through these things we grow through this. Yet he does not leave us alone. No, the Lord let us meet these challenges no matter how big they are. And he gives us the ability to stand against them and teach us how to fight and gives us strength to come up against it. It's the learning process. Growing up as a kid, I don't look like it, but there's a, years ago we used to do things like chop wood. There was only one big kettle stove in the living room that heated the whole house. I lost my whole church. But in that one pot, st pot stove, dad would take, come home with a big truck of wood and dump it in the backyard. And we would look at each other like you know, we were just a little tots. And like, he said, now we got to chop all this up. I said, man, this stuff looks like a lot of work. He said, don't worry. I said, do you have a chainsaw? He said, no, I got an axe and a handsaw. I said, we've got to chop all this stuff up. Yes, and make this wood ready to put into the fire. We would go out there and begin to beat on this little wood and didn't realize that the axe was just bouncing, just bouncing. Dad would come out there and put the wood lined up. So let me show you how to do this. And with one whack, the wood is just cut in half. Turn around again, he takes a big log that's like a, a, part, of a part of a tree, put it up on the thing, whack, whack, got four pieces of wood. Start stacking it up. We told him, keep going. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> said, now y'all got it? They said, we got it and left us out there. From sunup to the sundown, when he came back, all the wood was stacked up, ready to be put into the stove. He taught us how to do this. What are you saying, preacher? Sometimes hard work makes you want to work harder. I'm glad I didn't grow up with an iPad and an and a iPhone and everything just right before me. I grew up with the old-fashioned way to put some sweat equity into my life. Realize ain't nobody going to give you nothing. Help me, James Brown. Open up the door and out. I'll get this myself. It's in 
hard work, God teaches us how to fight. You're stronger today because God taught you how to be strong. This year in 2021 is a year of accuracy. It's the quality of state of being accurate and precise. Say, I will be accurate and precise. It is a willingness, a willingness here to participate in the unacted prophecy, symbolizing the victory that was about to take place, sealing the approval that if God told me to do it, it doesn't make sense, but I'm going to do it anyway. I need 50 people to say, take the next shot. Keeping your shot open quickly, Ford's Magazine writes the article in, tw in May 12 of 1997, writes the article about, an NBA Los about the NBA Los Angeles Lakers. They were playing a game five of the series, of the, round, of the second round series against the Utah Jazz. A guy named Kobe Bryant, skinny young teenager, rookie, was there. He had not received championship rings, nor has he received any Oscar awards. We were all there looking at the process of the growth of this young rookie. We were watching. Many of you probably remember that game. What, what he would become, but in game five, Utah Jazz playing against them. This was the pivoting moment for Kobe. We see him in his career growing so strong after that. Most people remember this game because in this pivoting game, Kobe shot four for 14. That means he shot 14 shots and only made four. He shot zero for six at the three-point line. But the pivoting reason here we see in this movement of Kobe in this game was one most fortunate that Byron Scott was on the bench injured. Robert Ory was rejected, was, was on the bench injured. Shaquille O'Neal's classic was, was fouled out the game. That's what he always seemed to got a chance to do. There was only a few minutes left in the game. Normally, Kobe would only play 15 minutes for the whole game. During this time and during this season, suddenly, it belonged, the game belongs to Kobe. It was his moment, it was his time. Promptly, Kobe, Kobe comes in with a few minutes left in the game and launched four air balls. The air balls go nowhere. They didn't do anything and they lost the game. Resu reporters were waiting outside the locker room, wanting to talk to Kobe and ask them, man, this unconscionable thing that you've done, the unexcusable, how could you shoot all these shots? It's a wonderful thing to be in the NBA. It's one thing to be in the NBA and miss one shot, but you've shot four air balls. Air balls. What were you thinking about? They're standing there waiting, microphone in Kobe's face, also with the camera in Kobe's face, wondering what he was going to say. Classic Kobe would say in the voice of Kobe, I had some good looks. I just didn't hit it. Kobe would say to himself, listen, you guys, I didn't stop shooting. I had some good looks. I just didn't make the shot. This is what it was, what Kobe was saying. In other words, no matter how you look at it, keep shooting your shot. People would talk about you if you don't shoot. Talk about you if you do shoot. Kobe was saying, in essence, this was just a chapter I had to get through in order to write the book somebody wants to read about. Can I keep talking to myself? up here. Don't worry about what you miss. Worry about what you're going to make. He knew this was only a chapter in his life to write a book that somebody would work, want to read. Taking the next shot is a pivoting move in your life over all and anything that will stop you from becoming the champion that God has intended you to be. Open the window of your mind, the prophet was saying, illustrating that the era of the Lord's deliverance is still working, Joash. Open the window and shoot your shot. Today, the Syrians of Apex they're going to be destroyed. But don't just shoot the shot anywhere. Shoot it toward the east where Apex is at. That's the direction of where your deliverance is going to be. Shoot it in the direction where you know that I'm not just going through the year this year just shooting my shot anywhere. I'm making my shot a target. Are you still flowing with me? He said they're in Damascus. Now ask God to give you and me the strength to pull the bow and power back. To pull the bow of faith back. Point our arrows in the right direction. Be precise and be precision and be accurate this year. Shoot for your business. Shoot for your dreams. Shoot for your goals. Shoot for your victory. Shoot for your vision. Shoot for your family. Shoot for your health. Open the window and take a shot. The opportunity is open right now. Don't let it pass you by. 2021 is the year of accuracy. Being precise, I told you. Whatever you need from the Lord, then ask them for it. It's not time this year to sit around like you've just been lost in Alice in Wonderland. You got to wake and realize I know who I am and whose I am. Baby girl, let me talk to you. You are 
God's prized possession. Apple of his eye. That's why the devil don't like you. He don't want you to pull it back and let it go one more time. It's in you the power is set forth. It's in you God has brought something great and you got to know who you are in Christ and who he is in you. You're not just average. You are somebody in God. You are strong. You are mighty. You are all the champions. Give God a praise in this house. Any champions in this house, then let me talk to the champion. This is my target year. Look at somebody and say, this is my target year. This is my target year. I want to be on target. Take your next shot. Listen to the response that he comes back to him in taking the next shot. There was a man in Mark's gospel, and I'm coming to the end quickly. In Mark's gospel, the 10th chapter, there was a man that was taking this last shot. The man's name was Bartimaeus, who did want to God to do one thing for him, and that was to open his eyes. The answer came to question came to him the Lord says in a blank check what do you want me to do for you but a man seen the road sitting by the roadside begging he was there Jesus of Nazareth was passing by he cried out son of David have mercy upon me he had a little compassion his he told him Jesus have a little compassion pity me just for a moment show me more sympathy let me understand that you are concerned about me then came to the place he asked him what do you want he said oh Open my blinded eyes. It is in this context of Mark, the 10th chapter. Many were telling him, shut up, be quiet. You heard this before, right? <laughs> shut up, be quiet, and don't say nothing. That's what the devil is telling some of y'all this year. It didn't happen last year, so it ain't going to happen this year. But I did say, and I prophesy, hold yourself back and say, Lord, I'm shooting for it once again. Many of them was telling him, be quiet and don't say anything. Don't say anything anymore. He says, I'm taking my next shot. As a blind man, you ought to help me because if I don't hit something, I might hit, <laughs> yes, you. So I'm taking my next shot. Point me in the right direction. Bartimaeus was there sitting. He said, listen, Jesus want to hear from you. So Jesus stood still because of the loud cry that was coming out of his voice. I want you to stop Jesus in traffic this morning. If you don't want nothing, just get him stopped. If you get him stopped, then I'll take my shot. He said, here, listen. He said, all of you move out the way. Call that man forward. The condition doesn't seem like it's possible. He was at a place where he was blind, had nothing to go in for him. But Jesus stopped with compassion. And here in the Bible says, they said, Jesus said to him, the people said, be of good cheer. Take courage. Today is your day. You're going to get your shot in today. Today, everything that was wrong is about to change for the good for you. Be of good cheer. Somebody say, be of good cheer and take courage. Today, this is your reset. Today, this is your comeback. Today, this is your rise up. Today, you can say that everything that was wrong is stopping right now. You can't sit there any longer when Jesus said come to me get up from where you're at and come to me when he calls you up you can't stay down there any longer the blank check now is coming take your next shot the Bible says Jesus said to him what do you want me to do for you ah, what do you want from me out of all the things Jesus could have said knowing the man needed healing he wanted to see what shot he was going to take the blind man says rabbi that I might receive my sight six words with one arrow change his life forever who am I prophesying to one shot got everything turned around rabbi that I might receive my sight Jesus said to him in Mark 10 52 he says go your way your faith has made you whole and immediately his sight was come back to him and he followed the way of Jesus in the year of 2021 be on take your next shot don't allow anybody to stop you from crying out to the Lord hit your target don't worry about what people are saying you stay focused and don't let nobody stop you from getting what God promised you to have they don't want it as bad as you have it but you got it pulled back let it go let it fly in the right direction knowing that 
that your next shot would change your every life and everything about you. You'll go from deficit to progressing in the next shot. How could this man, out of everything he could have asked for, was money an object? Money was an object, but what he needed was to have his eyes open. I need to come out of this blind state so I can see things more clearly. I need my faith open back up so I can see things more clearly. I believe the man understood that sight would be something that God would give him. I'll deal with the rest of the stuff if I got my faith back. I'll deal with all the other problems. If I can see where I'm going, I can handle the other obstacles. But taking the next shot was an opportunity for him. The window was open. The desire was in front of him. What he needed was sight. And he took the next shot. Taking the next shot is letting the enemy know you knocked me down. But I'm not staying down there. I'm getting back up again. I'm going for everything I can go for. If it's for broke, I'm going for broke. But I will not be down this year. I'm coming up this year. I got a target for my life. I got greatness on my mind. I got faith in my spirit. I got health in my mind. I got goals to be set. I got things to accomplish. I ain't got time to fool with nobody that ain't shooting for nothing. But I need God to do what he said. And if I can take another shot, you're not going to stop me. You're not going to hinder me. I'm taking my next shot. My business will be blessed. My family will be blessed. My life will be blessed. My mind will be blessed. I'm coming up strong. My praise is going to another level. This shot is going to change my life forever. Today is my day. The window is open. I'm not going to be lazy, but with enthusiasm spirit, I'm going for it all. I'm going to shoot till I get it. I'm going to craze till I get it. I'm going to holler till I get it. This is my opportunity. This is my year. 2021, I'm taking my next shot. say shoot shoot come on rest on your feet I know it's kind of selfish when I'm just preaching to myself. But you got some of it, didn't you? Hold your hands up and say, Lord, help me. Talk to me. Say, Lord, help me to be on target this year. I ain't got but a few shots. But I'm going to take the next shot and upgrade my life to everything you want me to have. Reach up real high and say, Lord, I'm going to put everything on this one arrow and watch my life catapult into something amazing. Devil, this shot is going through you to my goal. But I promise I'm going to hit my target. Hold your hands up. I will not be distracted. This year, I'm taking the next shot.